Hello everyone and welcome to the FIDE World Championship Dubai 2021, where world champion Magnus Carlsen is taking on the challenger Jan Nepomnici here at the Dubai Exhibition Center as part of Expo Dubai. They have played four amazing games of chess, but no one has managed to land a blow. Magnus Carlsen has been favored to win this event against his competitor, but Jan is proving to be much more than he could handle. And right now they stand tied at two games apiece. Game four was a nip and tuck affair. Magnus played a novelty in the opening, but Jan, after great deliberation, came up with a very precise defense, was able to neutralize the advantage. And after a few moves, Magnus realized that there was no opportunity to make a breakthrough and had to settle for a repetition. And the game ended in a draw. What will happen in game five now that Jan has the white pieces. He gets another try. Magnus has been playing incredible defense. In fact, has taken the initiative with Black in both games. Will Magnus be able to score the victory or will the challenger finally land a blow and break this whole championships wide open? The action is set to begin. Let's go to game five. We are so exciting to come here to be uh, to watching this uh, fantastic tournament between Magnus and uh, Nipu. It's completely surreal. I've played chess my entire life and this is the first time I've ever been able to come and experience this huge event in person. First of all, I'm really excited for this game because uh, it's going to be a tough competition at this and I really support Magnus and I'm very excited to see Vishy. I've never been to such a huge chess event. I've never met so many cool people in my life. I'm hoping to see Magnus break a world record, so it's very exciting. Well, super excited. It's game five. It's been such a massive fight. The first four games, the challenger really, really making it tough for the reigning world champion. Uh, Jan starts with the white pieces. What has he prepared? We've seen the anti-marshals. Who's going to deviate first? Is Magnus ready to fight it out with the black pieces? So many questions. Super excited. Uh, I think uh, Magnus will be the championship also. Uh, Nipo is a very nice uh, uh, player. Uh, and also there is many players will come in the future. I think also Fairuzja will come. Uh, I think Magnus still is like uh, a stone. <laughs> no, I feel Magnus is going to ace this competition as he can easily be one of the greatest in the chess competition, obviously after Vichy. Do you like chess? Yeah. How, how um, did you learn to play chess? Like 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? Six. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Reese Ashley, and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to Game 5 of the FIDE World Championship Dubai 2021. The match is tied after four fighting draws at two points apiece. Playing with the white pieces, Jan Nipomnesci. And with the black pieces, world champion Magnus Carlsen, the head organizer of this event, the president of FIDE, Arkady Dvorkovich, a special guest, the Minister of Tolerance and Coexistence and Commissioner General of Expo, Sheikh Nahyan bin Mubarak Al Nahyan. And with that, let the game begin. It's time for the beginning of game five of this heavyweight matchup. Jan Nepomnesi with the white pieces. We'll see whether or not he repeats what has happened before. And he has done so. E4, pawn to E4. That's the same move he played in game one and game three. And look at this, Magnus Carlsen repeating moves as well. And they are going at it. They seem to have their strategies planned out. Magnus bringing his knight out to C6. And there we have it. 
the Ruy Lopez, or sometimes known as the Spanish game. The bishop attacking the knight. Magnus knows this move inside and out. His quick response, pawn to a6, attacking the bishop, forcing it to go backwards. This is the exact same line they've played before. The question is whether or not they will deviate early and Magnus bringing his knight out, attacking a pawn in the middle of the board. And Jan has seen this move hundreds of times, castling quickly. These players are so good. They've memorized moves with their computer preparation and engines all the way down, sometimes as far as move 20. The first moves have been planned, and we see a rook moving there to E1. All standard stuff, all classically played variations. To follow the line, Magnus should be castling right now. Actually, B5, that's right, B5 is indeed the move, attacking the bishop first, the bishop dropping back, and now we expect him to castle in this moment, getting his king to safety, and there he goes. He's castled with his king, and now his king is well protected, and A4, that is exactly the move that Nepo played in game three. Pushing that pawn to a4, attacking Black's pawn. Could be a trade, but we remember from game three that Magnus played his bishop, his light square bishop to b7, bringing it into the game. But now he's slowed down. He's decided not to move immediately. What is on Magnus's mind at the moment? Why is it that he is not playing this move automatically? Magnus giving a longer pause than usual right now, and he's played the move rook to b8, certainly a move in this position. He's avoided bishop to b7, and Jan Nepomnici, stone-faced, not giving anything away. How much did he prepare for this particular wrinkle that Magnus has thrown at him, and he's playing instantly. He is showing that he is well prepared in this line, capturing the pawn on b5. These guys are so good, you could throw all sorts of moves at them and they'd be ready for it. And he has played virtually instantly, pushing his pawn to h3. Now getting up from the board, uh, he's just taking his jacket off at the moment, trying to get a bit more comfortable as they are about to get ready for the long fight ahead. Chess is a very important part of the Spanish pavilion for several reasons. First of all, because chess connects the Arabic culture and the Spanish culture. Arabs took chess with them to Spain at the end of the 8th century, and chess, as it is played today all over the world, was created in Spain at the end of the 15th century with the queen as the most powerful piece. Besides of that, Spain's motto in this expo is intelligence for life. And expo's motto is connecting minds. And plus, Spain is a leading country today in educational chess, I mean chess as an educational tool in schools, and is the most active country regarding the number of international tournaments organized every year since 1988. The first war uh, which comes to my mind when I think about chess is passion. Because the passion I feel today uh, for my job as a specialized journalist is the same that I felt 38 years ago when I started. Besides of that, thanks to chess, I have some knowledge on many marvelous uh, fields of human knowledge, like artificial intelligence, of psychiatry, psychology, mathematics, neurology, education, history, and so on. First of all, chess is extremely funny. And besides of that, it teaches you how to think. And well, I think the world today needs more than ever before a game that teaches you how to think. Well, uh, first of all, to beat any opponent, you have to play well. And uh, possibly <laughs> you have to play better than, than your rival. Uh, so that's, I guess, pretty obvious. Uh, 
play well, yeah, I'll do less mistakes and uh, as I guess yeah, great Savili Tartak ever said, the one uh, who makes, you know, the the last, uh, the one before last mistake, yeah, is going to win there, so that's... I think uh, before the world, the first um, world championship match, I, I made um, I made a serious mistake in sort of building up my opponent um, to something that he wasn't. Um, so at the start of the match and after the first couple of games, I was sort of feeling that um, I, w I was sort of expecting to face Vichy at his very, very best. Uh, and there at the very start, he felt almost invisible to me. Like, I didn't know, like, where to try and get at him. Um, so I think at that point I was too focused on what I thought my opponent could be rather than what he actually what he actually was. And after a, after a few games I sort of I realized that um, that he, he was vulnerable as well. He was making mistakes. So then I, I relaxed a lot more and I just managed to um, to play my game and after, after that it was was um, was much easier. Magnus has been deep in thought in this position as he tries to figure out exactly what to do and he's playing a great move, thematic move, aggressive move even, pawn to d5, pushing that pawn in the middle of the board, certainly creating some tension there. And Jan coming back to the table, certainly was in his rest area, but rushing back to the board, writing down the move, and instantly replying with knight B to D2, that knight that was on the left side of the board, he's brought it to the D2 square, and now he's leaving. He doesn't even want to sit at the table while Magnus is thinking, certainly under pressure. Is it psychological tactic he's used to let Magnus know that he is not afraid of him? Magnus has been feeling the pressure throughout. He's got to play accurately now. And he's played the move bishop to d6, a reasonable enough move putting the bishop on a better square, protecting a pawn as well. Seemingly a nice, solid move for Magnus, and he's leaving the bo Whoa, ho, ho, ho! He just knocked over some pieces there, adjusting them on his opponent's time. Not something that we could expect to do normally. That was definitely an interesting moment, but he didn't intend to do it, so no harm, no foul. Jan's turn to move and he must be feeling very confident his position is looking better and better with every move and now he's played his bishop to e3 that bishop has come off the back row and you see those pieces beautifully placed putting pressure on the chess position Magnus Carlsen feeling the heat right now and Nepo as usual gets up from the board and Magnus has to go into a deep think what to do as his opponent is tightening the screws. He is facing a huge challenge, and finally, he's played the move queen to e8. That's a sidestep move, not a move that you should expect normally as the queen goes sideways laterally instead of up the board. I think that this is a big moment for Jan Nepomnici. He has a move that looks amazing. He can push his pawn from c3 to c4. That pawn would threaten to attack the bishop by going further to c5. That's a strong move, pushing the pawn down the board. It's a big moment for Jan. Will he play it? This could be the turning point of this entire match. In the year 1283, the Spanish king Alfonso X wrote a book where he says that chess is a fantastic tool for the good atmosphere between Muslims, Jews, and Christians. Now, seven centuries and a half later, the, that is true. 
and we can see that here at the Expo Dubai in two different sites. We have the FIDE World Championship Final. FIDE has 195 countries affiliated and we have the World Schools Expo Dubai Tournament organized by the Spanish Pavilion with people from 54 countries in the online phase. And here we have uh, children from 10 countries from very different cultures. Actually, what we have at the Spanish Pavilion with that tournament is a mosaic of cultures. Chess connects cultures and different religions as well. For instance, yesterday here at the Spanish Pavilion, for the first time in history, a team from the Emirates accepted to play a match against a team from Israel. Never happened before in chess, and it happened only very few times in other sports. What we are going to see today here at the Spanish Pavilion is a friendly game between one girl from the Emirates and one boy from Israel making a team, playing as a couple, against one boy from the Emirates and one girl from Israel. It's a friendly game and I think that that image will be all over the world because it's a very symbolic image. Besides my passion for chess and my profession, I am convinced that I am modestly contributing to a better world because chess makes you happiest, makes you a better person. And I'm also convinced that the world needs chess today more than ever before. Yeah, today it's like a little poor opening. It's Royal Lopez, it's very difficult. Yeah, and I think the game will go to uh, same uh, yesterday and before result. So it's uh, close to draw, I think that, yeah. Uh, I'm with uh, who I think is going to win this game. I think it's going to be Nepo. I think Nepo is going to surprise. He's, uh, he's playing with White. He's got a dramatic opening. I think uh, Magnus has uh, killed a lot of time really thinking us through. Uh, I think this might be his big day. This might be his breakthrough moment. Well, I just don't want it to be another draw, which I think is very likely to happen, but I like to see, you know, a win for either side. <laughs> Absolutely not. Magnus has been here, done that before. He's had 12 draws against Fabiano Caruana. I mean, he's got four World Championship experiences behind him. He knows he needs to wait it out. He knows he needs to seize the opportunity when it comes, not get too excited, not complicate things too much. Magnus Carlsen knows what he's doing. The games are always exciting because it just takes one decisive result to really heavily tip the favor. So far the game today looks kind of drawish, but you really never know what's going to happen. Jan Nepomnesci with a golden chance to take the bull by the horns and push his pawn from C3 to C4. That's such an aggressive move. He has a great opportunity right now, and he's played Rook over to D1. He did not play the move that should have been played. He's instead played this move, Rook to D1, and it's not a bad move. It's a good try. We see Magnus coming back to the table. But I'm sure Magnus must have been worried about that pawn advance because that would have put all the pressure on Black's position. Ever since that move, Rook to D1, Magnus has been able to neutralize White's advantage. And now he has traded bishops. Bishop takes bishop. A good idea when you have a little bit of space you make sure you trade off some pieces. And we see Jan coming back to the board. He knew Magnus was going to trade off these bishops. It just makes his task that much easier to defend and really only one move. And he has captured the bishop with his queen. That allows Magnus to make a queen trade and that's gonna bring the game closer and closer to a draw. 
and we see Magnus has traded Queens in that position. Rook capturing back. And Magnus now playing the move Rook to A8, trading off Rooks, or at least offering a trade of Rooks. This game has lost all fight. It's certainly going to be another equal result. Jan Nepomnesi must be dejected right now. He can feel that he had a great opportunity and has blown his chance. Now just offering yet another trade of these rooks. This is not something that's going to win him the game. And Magnus coming back to the board. He can smell that he has saved this game. And now he has played the move rook to A2 with check, repeating this rook back and forth and rook to D2 by Jan instantly being played. He can't allow this rook to wreak havoc on that rank. And now rook back down to A1. And they are just repeating moves now. Jan Nepomnici looking dejected. Magnus Carlsen very confident. And there's only one choice. It's to make sure that this rook does not stay in the position. And Jan has played the move rook to D1. Repeating the position three times and that's it. Game five has concluded in a draw. We have seen five draws in a row from these incredible fighters. No one so far has been able to land a punch. Basically every time when you have you, when you are giving some chances uh, and you fail to use them properly, you are you're not happy. Uh, but uh, yeah, I believe today it was like a very pleasant flow of the game, and uh, ob obviously I should have tried harder to you know use uh, okay the momentum. Um, I had, uh, as you said, I had a clear goal. What I wanted to do, uh, wanted to do, and that was reach the um, the fortress that I had in the game. And um, in that sense, um, uh, it was was job well done, and uh, that was uh, definitely uh, satisfying. Of course, uh, he plays extremely well, and uh, I mean, it's today. It's basically not about him defending well, but me, you know, uh, using all the opportunities I had. Uh, but uh, I mean, in general, uh, I, I believe okay, these games are pretty much tense, and despite its old draws, it's we, we we are trying to play reasonable chess. I think there is uh, some magical cutoff point where it draws um, instead of just being normal, they become a problem. But don't think think we've uh, crossed uh, the Rubicon yet. And we will resume the day after tomorrow at 16.30 for game six. Thank you and have a good night.